Uh, so we're here with one of our summer signings, Zanetta Wine, uh, for another episode of our City Sit Downs. Um, and with training starting up again and one game under under your belt, how does it feel to be back in a competitive environment? It's a little bit unexplainable, to be honest, because obviously a lot of us haven't played full contact in what is now five months, mm -hmm. no matter where you are in the world. So, oh, I guess except for Germany. So it's pretty pretty awesome to be able to train and just kind of get back to somewhat of a what would be normal life. So it's exciting. It's awesome. Nice. And uh, you, you signed in July. Um, how have you settled into the team so far and how are you finding life in Glasgow? I'm finding life in Glasgow really easy, really easy to settle in. I think all of the girls are very welcoming, super nice. Uh, the coaching staff and the people affiliated with the club are really welcoming as well. And I've never had so many people help me randomly, like random acts of kindness in the city before than Glasgow. So it's it's nice. It's going well. Oh, that's so nice to hear. But yeah, that sounds like, yeah. Sounds like Glasgow. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just how did it feel? After some time sort of training in small groups um, and a few contact sessions, how did it feel to be playing as a full team? Feels nice. It feels nice to, because you need that. You need that as a team to be able to connect with not just the players that you're going to be playing with, but players that may go into those positions or players that may switch into that position when. And it's just an interchange of play. So I think it's really important to have everybody in and understand how people like to communicate and play and what they like. And I mean, we still have a lot of work to do there, but I think um, it's really good to have everybody in and try to get those vibes going. Um, yeah. So most recently, uh, you played a year in Norway at CLEP. Um, Based on your brief stint at City so far, what sort of differences are you seeing between the two leagues and the two setups? Well, it's it's so interesting because I was trying to I was asked this question the other day, and it's difficult to compare countries because culture wise, is very is just different mentality, so that kind of affects the way. It kind of creates differences, and so to compare them, it's difficult. I don't want to like say one is more than the other, or I haven't gotten a chance to play in the Scottish league, so I can't really compare the league quite yet. But I can say that the girls do work really hard here, and equally so in in Norway as well. Um, the and the styles are different to what I played in Norway too, so it's just different tactics. Mm -hmm different mentality different coaches so yeah. that's a lot different mm -hmm. and it's 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 not necessarily I guess good or bad it's just different so yeah. it's different in all aspects because the coach is different sure yeah if that answers your question um, I use the word different like 50 <laughs> times so. it's different we'll leave it at that <laughs> yeah <laughs> leave it at that um and how did the how did the move from city come about I just wanted a new experience in a different country. And I think Glasgow City kind of out of the options that I was looking at had the most enticing new experience for me. Obviously they've done well in getting themselves to the quarterfinals of Champions League. That is a huge feat. And I'm lucky enough that Scott was thought that I could be a part of that. Um, so that's something that definitely was in my mind's eye when Glasgow City popped up. That and the fact that they're well known in Scotland for winning league and getting to Champions League. doing uh, They've had a lot of success. So I wanted a new experience in a different country. That's kind of why I moved. Cool. So, yeah, yeah, and um, I read that you played, you've played four years of college in the U.S. at the University of New Mexico. And just as you graduated... And so I hope to start your professional career. The, uh, the yeah. US Women's League folded. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah. 
Can you just explain <laughs> like how that felt for you and then maybe go into a bit more detail about what you did next? Wow, yeah, it was just a huge bummer. It's just, just a, like a huge bummer. That's the way I could explain it. Because there's a lot of girls that were looking to play, obviously, after college. Um, how I came about that, that's funny, funny story. Uh, so my teammate and I both wanted to play after college. So we still, we both still had a bit of education that we had to finish before we could make the move. And we're thinking, okay, well, all these other leagues in other countries are still playing maybe somehow we can contact them. We didn't have an agent. We didn't have any model to follow because there's no model to follow ahead of us that we knew. And so we just went on the UEFA website and emailed all of the clubs that listed their emails there. We wrote them down and then emailed all these clubs with our highlight videos. And my friend got an email back for her actually, but she had broken her foot. And so she said, well, my friend is available. I unfortunately am not. And I was lucky enough that they uh, thought I was all right as well. So, yeah. And that's how it all started. From there, I got an agent because I met some other professional footballers. And then, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was lucky. Kind of just lucky. Yeah. yeah, just super lucky. But, I mean, yeah. putting yourself out like that and emailing that many people when – everything seems like it's going against you just shows that you're obviously really determined to get into a professional career yeah yeah fair play a little bit of luck sometimes it happens yeah Yeah. and and looking back now obviously it was an awful moment for the women's game um but personally for you do you think maybe you're grateful the way it unfolded because it led you to different opportunities in europe and stuff yeah i don't think i would ever say i regret anything and the way that I've kind of gone about my career and how it happened and stuff. Because, first of all, I think regret just causes personal issues that it's just not worth your time because you can't change it anyways. Whatever happens, happens. Um, but, no, I don't think I would change anything. I'm happy with all the circumstances that, that have happened to me have happened for a reason that made me hopefully a a better person now so that's how I see it (laughs) yeah better person and probably a better player as well hopefully (laughs) (laughs) and you've obviously you've played in quite a few different countries haven't you like you you had a stint in the UK at uh, Sunderland and what was your experience like playing there I really enjoyed the league I it was unfortunate because Sunderland's bid to the top league got denied. So I think they got punished quite harshly in getting put into the third division, Mm -hmm. considering that we're the bottom half of the table, but we're at the top half of the bottom of the table. So I didn't think, I just felt like it was quite harsh that there was a few other teams that maybe didn't perform as well. And, but they did their due diligence and got in with their good um, bid. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think England needs a northern team. They don't have one right now. They call Liverpool the North. I mean, that's not really North. That's yeah. like, eh. <laughs> I would say Newcastle is the North. Yeah. But, yeah that's, oh my. It's a good point. <laughs> it's like the West. <laughs> yeah. but, okay. North, Northish West. I feel like they would consider themselves Northerners. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not from the UK, so I can't say. (laughs) But I really did enjoy my time there. Nice. Yeah. And um, just uh, in on a broader level, in terms of like the US, obviously being one of the biggest, if not the biggest, women's football being one of the biggest sports in the US, um, and the game over here is constantly developing and it's starting to gain a bit of momentum. Um, in your experience. How do people's attitudes towards the women's game differ in the U.S. and then in Europe? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think for, like you said, women's football is, it's the woman, it's the top sport for females. Hmm. And our national team has become so reputable that 
everybody kind of wants to get in on a piece of it and see it and enjoy it. And they love the players and they talk about the professional league and those players. So it's a really good environment and really positive environment when you say you're a female football player. Um, there's just like, ooh, and awe to it when in reality it's just like you get to play your sport for a little bit longer at a high level. Like it's not, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's all <clears throat> like gold cars and fancy watches, if you know what I mean. It's not like super fancy. Mm-hmm. Like if you see a female football player and they're not on a national team, or even sometimes on a national team, they're playing because they absolutely love it. Like there's no enticing financial <laughs> games really. But um yeah. So I think in the US to get back to your question, culturally it's really positive and if you say you play for a certain team in the US, they're like, Oh yes, I know what you're talking about. Whereas maybe in another city when you say, Oh, I've played for I think the UK is different, it's quite similar. When you say, oh, I play for Glasgow City, they go, oh, yes, I know what you're talking about. In Norway, it was a little different. If you were out of your, if you met the offhand person, they would say, oh, really, you play football? I didn't realize that there was a football team or this and that. So it's, it depends on what country you're in. But, yeah, for the most part, I think it's a pretty positive pretty positive feedback for football players all over the world. It's gotten more popular in every country significantly, and I think everybody can notice that. Yeah. From media, yeah, and status of players and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And um, did that maybe play a role in, obviously, I know know in America there's, like, growing up a lot of, uh, a lot of young kids play lots of different sports. Um, What was it that made you want to stick with football? And when did you start, like, when did you decide to go down that? happens like focus on football yeah I don't that's really good I think for me I just wanted to be I wanted to do something athletic at a high level I didn't know what it was at first it was swimming I wanted to be a swimmer but I was too small like this wasn't this wasn't gonna work out (laughs) um (laughs) so I think I started playing football when I was 11 12 and it just kind of just stuck with me it just stuck with me. I liked being on a team. I didn't, I realized that I don't like being alone. Like I thought I did. Um, yeah. And I just had a lot of positive experience and with those positive experiences building, I just stayed with it. Nice. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously you will know as a, a footballer yourself, but a lot of young players are now more and more looking up to female footballers as idols and role models. Um, for you personally growing up um have you had did you have any role models that you kind of aspired to be like or that pushed you to be a professional yeah that's difficult i don't know if i had a specific player because when i was growing up they didn't get much they didn't get much media attention until i was nine so like 99 they're called the 99ers maybe you're familiar (laughs) with it yeah maybe you're not yeah but Mia Hamm was really big at the time, definitely was an idol. I don't know if I necessarily wanted to play with her or play like her, but I wanted to be as much of a beast as I could like she was. Um, And so you just try your hardest every game to be the best that you can be. So she was a really big idol. Otherwise, it was male players because that's really kind of all we – off for the most part growing up which is kind of sad but it's changing so yeah exactly <laughs> going in the right direction yeah. <laughs> yeah um so just back to your current playing uh, situation um how have you found your experience at the club with scott as the coach and uh, some of the more experienced players who've had quite a lot of success at city so far um the experienced players are but they're pretty they're pretty awesome they're really chilled um very intuitive in a way that if you show up to train like oh so how are you feeling how are your legs how are you getting on like they care about how you're doing and I, I think it's genuine so like I said all of the girls 
including the older ones, are very welcoming and it's good. It's a good, it's a good relaxing social environment. And then Scott as well, he <clears throat> makes sure he made sure to make me feel welcome as well. Like I could ask whatever the question I wanted. So yeah, it's a good it's a good environment. Good. Yeah. Um, and just finally, there's obviously a lot of excitement after the Champions League of heading into the regular season uh, after a long break. Um, what sort of goals do you have for yourself for the for the season? For the season, I would love to just be an impactful player, be a player that makes big saves, makes good passes. Like I just want to be positive attacking wise and be positive defensively and just be a beast that's really my goal <laughs> yes. be as just be the best player that I can honestly um be and hopefully that can come out yeah that's yeah. really it it's pretty simple <laughs> yeah good goals um is there anything else that you'd yeah. like, like to add or say to the fans maybe before before we see you in action Um, not too much, just hopefully the fans are able to come to games or see games and they enjoy what they see and hopefully they enjoy what we kind of show them and we can be hopefully successful this year in playing some good football and bringing some good entertainment in a time that is kind of weird. That's about it. <laughs> totally, yeah. Thank you.